So this is a classical combinatorial problem, uh, one of the many problems that you can phrase in terms of urns. So a urn is just uh, sort of this clay uh, bowl type vase thing. It's just a container. Um, you can think of it as a bag and the bag's got stuff in it. In, in this sort of situation here we have some balls of different colours, red and black here, and we can do various things with them. And uh, uh, yeah, as I say, there are many of these types of problems in combinatorics, and some of them are actually quite fascinating. So Google Polya urns if you're interested in more. Anyway, here we have to look at these two urns here. And we are asking, first of all, that uh, we, we have to select one of these just at random. So 50% chance of selecting this one or this one. And then once we've selected the urn, we reach into it blindly and grab up a ball and look at the color. So the question then is, what's the probability that the ball we took, that we now have in our hand, is red? So that's the question that we have to answer. So this is not too difficult. We first have to look at the first bit. An urn is selected at random. So we could draw up a decision tree, for instance. So here we could either choose urn number one, or we could choose urn number two. And we have 50% or half probability of doing either of these. And now we can look at the second part of the problem here. We choose a ball at random from the, from the urn that we've chosen. So for instance, if we chose urn number one and reach into it and draw a ball, the ball could either be red or it could be black. So for instance, it could be red. And we can write little R here for red, a red ball. Or it might be black. So let's say B, a black B for black. Of course, the same thing would be true down here reaching into urn number two, if that were the urn that we've chosen, we could also get a red ball or a black ball, and there we go. Now the probability, if we had chosen urn number one and then chosen a red ball, well, what's that probability? So given that we chose this urn, what's the probability that it was a red ball that we, cho uh, that, we, um, that we got when we reached into it? And then we have to look at the urn and say, well, how many balls are there all in all? There are one, two, three, four, five. How many of those are red? Two. So the probability is two out of five that we chose a red ball given that we chose urn one. And of course, we've only got red and black balls, so we could either count or just say, well, the remaining probability must be three out of five that we got black here. Down here, if we've chosen the second urn, then we could find these probability, probabilities once again. Oh, now there are a couple of uh, balls here to count. Can't see them immediately at first glance, but we see that there are four red and five black, so four out of nine. That's the probability of getting a red ball. And then five out of nine of getting a black. Ah, what was it we have to answer again? Yes, the probability of ending up with a red ball. So you could do that in two ways. Either choose the first urn and then choose a red one, or choose the second one and then choose the red one. So we're looking at the probabilities of getting either the reds up here or the reds down there. So let's first calculate what the probability of getting these sort of reds are. Well, that's a half times two fifths. So in other words, a half times two fifths, or in other words, that's one fifth. And down here, the probability would be a half times four ninths. So a half times four ninths, or in other words, two ninths. And if we add those two probabilities together, we get the answer. So one-fifth plus two-ninths. That's something to do with forty-fifths. Let's see. Nine. That's over here. And ten over there. So we get nineteen out of forty-five. That's our probability of getting a, a red ball. So just a little bit more than a third. In part B, we're doing something similar. So again, we're looking at the probability that we end up with a red ball, but the scenario is a little bit more complicated now. Now we, just don't, we don't just choose an urn at random and so forth. Now what we do is we look at urn one, we draw a ball from it, take that ball and put it into urn two. From urn two, we grab a ball, and then we ask which color it is in particular. We look at the probability that the ball that we now have is red. So this is a bit trickier, but it's not too bad. In fact, if we look at the decision tree that I've just drawn here, 
it's pretty much the same sort of thing. We have a, well, uh, if you just looked at the tree, it would also be, you know, with the same number of branches and so forth. But it does require a bit of explanation now. So, think, think about this. We look at urn one, we draw into urn one, and two things can happen. Either you get a red ball or a black ball. Now suppose that we get a red ball. So here I've written R1 for the first ball that we draw is red. Now I put that into urn two. So there are four red balls here and five black ones. Now urn two has five red ones and still five black ones. Alternatively, I could have drawn a black ball from urn one, in which case when I add it to urn two, I've now got instead of five black balls, I've got six black balls, but the same number of red balls as before. And so forth. So if that were the case here that we now have five of each then I draw into urn, draw, <laughs> I draw a ball from urn two and then either get a, a red ball or a black ball and I label them R2 for the second ball that I draw that in this case it's red or in this case it's black and down here similarly if we uh, have this situation and we're drawing a ball from that then we can either get a red ball or a black ball again. So that's the general setup, but what are the probabilities? So let's have a look at that. Well, first of all, <coughs> the first ball that we draw could be red or black. There's a two out of five chance that we drew a, a red ball to begin with. And of course then, three out of five chance that we drew a black ball. Okay, what's the chance that we drew a red ball from the second urn in this scenario here? Well, we have five of, uh, five of the reds, and there are ten each, so that's five out of ten, or a half. And, of course, there's also a half probability of drawing a black ball, because half of the balls there are black. Down here, it's not symmetric. We have four red balls out of ten. So the probability of drawing a red ball would be four out of ten, or in other words, two-fifths, two out of five. And the remaining probability would be that of drawing a black, <laughs> a black ball from the third urn. So we get this probability. And now we know all the probabilities that we need to know to be able to answer this question. And in fact, part C as well. So, what do we have to answer? Well, the probability that we drew a red ball from the second urn. So that's these two, these two uh, events. And the probabilities of them well, we can add them together just like in part A and get the answer. So let's do that. So the probability that we got a red ball, given that we found a red ball from urn one and placed it in, is two fifths times a half, which is one fifth. And over here, well, to get to this scenario, it's three fifths times two fifths, or in other words, six twenty fifths. And if we add the, these two probabilities together, we get the answer. So one fifth plus six twenty fifths is well, one fifth is the same as five twenty fifths. So five plus six is eleven twenty fifths, and that is our answer. Having answered part B, we can now go on to part C and answer uh, answer that question. And I've phrased it very compactly, and we might have to have a look at what's what's actually being asked. So we have to find the probability that we had first drawn a black ball, given that we uh, then drew a red ball the second time. So in part B, we have to find the probability that we ended up with either of these scenarios where we drew a red ball from the second urn. So in part C, we're assuming that that's what happened. So we end up with a red ball and we ask, well, how did that happen? Did we draw a red ball to begin with or a black ball to begin with? So this is a conditional probability. Now, you can look at the diagram and answer it there, and we will do that, but we'll also use Bayes' law. Now, Bayes' law is a very fundamental law, and you might remember the proof, or maybe not. In fact, I'd say, forget about the proof, because every time you use it, you basically prove it. And here's why. So, if we write up the definition of conditional probability, it's the probability that both of these things happen. So, B1 and R2, divided by the probability, that, probability uh, that we're talking about, or the probability that we're in the event R2. So the probability of R2 
If we continue from here, then we can transform the top probability going backwards to a conditional probability times another probability, like so. So we could say that this is the probability of a red ball being drawn the second time, given that we drew a, ball, a black ball the first time, times the probability that we drew a black ball the first time, and now we're dividing by the probability that we drew a red ball to begin with. And this is actually just Bayes' rule that we've, we've derived already. It doesn't quite look uh, like Bayes' rule as you see it in the notes because there's usually some big sum. But actually, this probability here is that sum. And we worked it out in part B. See, there's a sum there. That's exactly what we're talking about. So we actually have the numbers here. This probability here we worked out in part B. So this is equal to 11 20 fifths. And then we have this conditional probability that we draw a red ball, given that we draw a black ball. And then we can look at the diagram here. So we're talking about this event here. So given that we drew a, a black ball, what's the probability of drawing a, a red ball? That was two fifths. And then we have the black ball probability. That was just, what's the probability of drawing a black ball on the first attempt? Well, from the first turn, sorry. That's three fifths. And now we just need to work out what this is equal to. Ah, we've got five, five, and 25. That all cancels, leaving us two times three divided by 11, which is six over 11. And that's our answer.